Okay, so in the end we have uh, three very good for their price decks and uh, three different ideas, uh, three different ways in which to uh, design a deck. Now, uh, someone asked me at, uh, after the last video, uh, why don't you have recommendations? And my thought is, well, if it's here in front of me um, right now, I recommend it. So if you had, you know, seven hundred odd dollars and you want a one box solution, or you say you want a one grand near field listening setup with a pair of emotivas, uh, NFB10 ES2, good sound, uh, very good in technology implementation, can drive anything pretty well. Um, you know, it's not as resolving as the top end one, obviously, but still, I mean, I put it in my living room. I'm used to high end. I still enjoy listening to music within my living room and with my kids. Um, and that's not just kids' music, my music. So, definitely a good piece of kit. Uh, the Inedio D2 has been a bit of a, considered a bit of a giant slayer. Uh, of course, you get more resolution, especially if you're getting high quality recordings. Uh, if you're getting the high quality recordings, this is definitely worth uh, looking into. Uh, sound is, uh, of course, uh, absolutely flat, dead neutral. Um, it was uh, on their website, they have a lot of measurements to show how good it is. And if you're a person who likes to have good measurements to back up a, a design, this is the one to go for. Only in comparison to these two and, and my Master 7 did I notice a bit of character on this when I plugged it straight into the wall. Uh, was a little bit of harshness. Uh, with the, the you know the, the a little bit of imperfection in both bass, mids, and treble, uh, with everything sounding a little bit forward and aggressive uh, through the mids especially, uh, not as of course smooth as the uh, Reason Essence or my Master Seven, uh, but it was only in comparison again. Some people might find it, especially people who like the more uh, mellow sounding, non oversampling decks, will find this maybe a little bit too harsh, a little bit too thin sounding, and that's more. Uh, not that it lacks in bass, but it's so spacious sounding. The bass doesn't have, doesn't, you don't feel, you notice as much it, it as prominently, especially with something like the little emotivas, which don't go down below at 50 hertz. And uh, so the combination was is a little bit thin sounding, but still very good, especially for the money. Now, then the reason essence, uh, you know, absolutely amazing sound. If you like it, nothing but the facts, kind of uh, sound. This is the one to go for, you know, absolutely dead black background around everything and just the music. Uh, no harshness, nothing, no fault essentially. And uh, uh, again, it was only in comparison to other uh, uh, converters that uh, I could I could say some people might find that if they don't like that character of that that dead neutral character, they may not like this. But with DSD, it was a different a different beast. It did sound much more. Uh, kind of mellow and, and engaging. Not, I mean, a huge amount more as in terms of the difference between a bass heavy headphone and a, uh, a bass light headphone. But for people who are really picky about how they sound, it did sound uh, more relaxing with DSD files if you can go to the trouble of either getting hold of them or, you know, if you people who, who uh, cop, uh, rip their own SACDs or, or whatever. So in that case, it, it was really fantastic. Uh, amazing piece of kit. Um, Again, they're not going to substitute uh, a high-end uh, amp, uh, especially the big tube amps or, you know, like a, a Eddy Current um, a Balancing Act or, or uh, a Donald North Audio or uh, a, GS a head amp GSX or, you know, pick one of your top top power amps. They're not going to substitute that uh, even with the, you know, the balanced outputs at all. But still, I was quite impressed about how this drove the LCD3s. It was only really on the fast and really dramatic music that I started to feel it was a bit too closed in. Uh, but for a lot of jazz I listened to, like it was it was yeah, that that kind of uh, um, kind of sharpness, as in as in clarity to the sound, uh, was fantastic with these. Really fantastic combination. And actually, in the evenings when you know my kids are asleep, I plug in the IEMs and wow, you know, plug in the JH13s, the the uh, one plus twos, and and absolutely fantastic listening there. So, in the end, pick your budget, and if you like, you know, you don't want anything, you're one of those people who doesn't like the idea of anything coloured or, uh, you know, you're not a, a mushy tube person or a non-oversampling deck person, these will be the kit to go for.
I reckon, um, amongst all the millions of other options available. There are three fantastic units. Um, uh, things to consider, which you might want to know, uh, they're all going to require drivers to work uh, with uh, USB, uh, high-res USB files properly, and they're all available at the, the respective websites. Um, on an, if you have an Apple computer, no problem, they just plug in and work. No issues there. Uh, if you have out, if you need to play direct DSD, you'll need something like a Mac without Ivana. I don't know what it is on PCs to play them back. I'm sorry, um, and that just works again. No problem with that one. Uh, and uh, other than that, I can't think of any particular thing unless you wanted. If you need AES input, that's the one to go for, or you just buy a Nutric adapter for 70, 80 bucks um, off eBay. For the other ones, if you wanted to, for some reason, you needed to use an AES. Uh, digital cable. Um, uh, some I didn't find the, the the button volume control much of an issue. I mean, if you have to ramp up the volume, this one these are all obviously far more convenient. Uh, it's not going to be a fast volume switcher at all. So that's the only convenience thing. The reason it was there's no knob on here is actually they tended to break in shipping. So uh, the owner of Audio GD just said no, no more knobs, no more rotary encoders and knobs. Because if you whacked the knob too hard, it would actually break the pop open the rotary encoder. Easily fixable, but nuisance all the same. So, front flat front panel it is. And so, that's the deal between all three of them. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll answer them as best I can. There's always something someone asks, and I and I have I've missed it or forgotten it. So please do ask. And I hope you enjoyed my review of these three units. And see you on headphones.